In this video, I will be watching the CNO online webcast, Code of Conduct. It is a 20-minute video. So this is evidence that I completed this. Let's watch this. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on CNO's revised Code of Conduct. My name is Eva Tirana. I am a strategy consultant at the College of Nurses of Ontario. Today, I am joined by my colleague, Chantal Ryu, who is an advanced practice consultant with a practice quality team here at CNO. Next slide, please. Before we begin, we'd like to start with our land acknowledgement statement. CNO operates on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous communities across Ontario, which continue to be home to Indigenous peoples. CNO's office is in Toronto, on land that is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Next slide, please. In this webinar, we will cover CNO's regulatory role in setting practice standards, the evolution of modernizing the code of conduct. We will highlight some of the key features of the revised code and spotlight a new principle in the code focused on inclusive and culturally safe care. Then we will go through a few broad-based questions and we'll demonstrate how you can apply the revised code in practice scenarios. Next slide, please. CNO's mandate is to protect the public. One of the ways that we fulfill our mandate is by developing, establishing, and maintaining practice standards to ensure all nurses practice safely and competently. Practice standards set the benchmark for safe nursing practice. They inform nurses of their accountabilities and educate the public on what to expect of nurses when receiving care. Next slide, please. The original Code of Conduct was first introduced in 2019 as the overarching practice standard describing the behavior and conduct all nurses in Ontario are professionally accountable to, regardless of their role, title, or practice setting. In 2020, we began our journey in modernizing standards to promote safe nursing practice in the interest of patient safety. During this time, we sought out information, established objectives, and developed a new framework. Informed by the evidence, the objectives of this initiative ensured that practice standards are accessible, meaning that they are clear and easy to understand, defensible, that they are evidence-informed and measurable, and relevant, that they reflect contemporary practice to prevent risk, informed by stakeholders, and meet stakeholder needs. Our first priority in modernizing standards was to review and update the Code of Conduct to reflect the evolving practice environment, changing public expectations and societal values. In 2022, we developed and consulted on proposed updates on the Code, and in December of that same year, CNO's Council approved the revised Code with an effective date of June 5, 2023. This year, we are rolling out the revised code and developing resources to support its application and practice for nurses and stakeholders. We're also raising, uh, raising awareness of the code and highlighting new expectations and accountabilities for nurses. Next slide, please. This is our modernizing standards framework. The code of conduct is considered the central hub of CNO's practice standards. It describes the core behaviors and conduct expected from all nurses in Ontario. You will note in dark blue topic-specific standards that support the code. The lighter blue section shows a new practice standard that is currently under development. This new practice standard focuses on nursing scope of practice and will reflect the upcoming regulatory changes to expand the scope of nursing practice for RPNs. The foundation to our practice standards are based on the entry-level competencies shown at the bottom. 
And finally, in the outer layer of the visual are the objectives of modern standards, accessible, defensible, and relevant. Next slide, please. To modernize the code, CNO engaged in robust consultation. We gathered feedback from a wide range of stakeholders through focus groups, interviews, advisory groups, and a public consultation survey. We connected with diverse communities, including vulnerable and underserviced communities, to capture the client, nursing, and system level perspectives in the code. Through our consultations, we heard that the code is relevant and clear to nursing practice. Other feedback included support for adding a new principle focused on, di on diversity, equity, and inclusion, clarifying terminology with definitions such as cultural safety and cultural humility, integrating key concepts such as empathy and advocacy for client safety, and the importance of developing resources such as online educational tools to support the code's application for various system partners, including nurses, the public, and employers. Next slide, please. The code continues to have six overarching principles. These principles were revised and reorganized to support greater clarity and usability. The code contains action-oriented statements. For example, we remove statements that were not action-focused or cannot be clearly measured or observed. There are direct links embedded in the code to other practice standards and guidelines to support greater usability. The code also includes clear terminology defined in a glossary. And lastly, we enhance the code's alignment with the professional misconduct regulation. Next slide, please. These are the six principles of the revised code. Each principle is supported by a set of statements of core behaviors all nurses are accountable for. All principles have equal importance and they work together to describe the conduct, behavior, and professionalism necessary for safe and ethical nursing practice in Ontario. I will now turn it over to Chantal who will highlight for us principle two, focused on nurses providing inclusive and culturally safe care. Over to you, Chantal. Thank you, Eva. <clears throat> we will now like to introduce you to principle two, a new principle focused solely on providing inclusive and culturally safe care. The journey to understand diversity, equity, and inclusion to support culturally safe care is one of learning and on learning. And as mentioned earlier, we had a significant input from a wide range of stakeholders. This included communities that could speak to the issues around discriminations that impact on care. This was an important first step for the CNO. Next slide, please. Principle two outlines nurses accountability to provide inclusive and culturally safe care by practicing cultural humility. This principle supports nurses to actively acknowledge the client's history, culture, and perspective as they access the healthcare system. Additionally, this, this, this principle offers an understanding that nurses are accountable for advocating for equitable and culturally safe care that is free from discrimination. The introduction to this principle states that nurses demonstrate cultural humility through self-reflection and evaluating their own beliefs. They advocate for equitable and culturally safe care that is free from discrimination. This includes understanding how personal attributes and societal contexts such as disability, sexual identity, anti-Indigenous, anti-Black racism, influences the client's care. Next slide, please. As part of creating a greater understanding of principle two, it's helpful to review the definitions of cultural humility and cultural safety, as these are central to inform the behaviors expected of nurses. Within the modern code of conduct, there are a detailed glossary that provides in-depth lists of definitions for these key terms. Next slide, please. Cultural humility involves self-awareness and self-reflection of one's own biases 
and those that may be present in the practice setting or in the system as a whole. It also involves understanding power differentials and continuously learning and building skills to understand cultural contexts. This is an ongoing process focuses on maximizing the client nurse relationship and reducing the client's vulnerabilities that may come from the care situation, the nurse or the system. Next slide, please. Cultural safety is where a healthcare provider has recognized the impacts of their own cultural identity on their practice. Recognizing this helps the nurse address inequalities and discriminations that may lead to these power imbalances. The goal is to create an environment that is free from racism and discrimination where people feel safe. As you can see, the cultural humility is, is a process that supports and promotes an, indi an individual nurses to self-reflect on inclusive care. Cultural safety is an outcome of that self-reflection and it's the action a nurse may take to support a client. For nurses, it speaks to their accountabilities to support and promote culturally safe care through recognizing and identifying inequalities and discrimination and advocating and taking action. Next slide, please. To help apply the concept, the concepts of applying and providing inclusive and culturally safe care by practicing cultural humility, principle two is categorized into three sections of what we describe as core behaviors. They are self-reflection, creating safer healthcare experiences, and training and education. Each section highlights different actions that nurses integrate into their practice when demonstrating cultural humility and culturally safe care. CNO is creating learning modules on principle two that will go, <clears throat> that will go further into detail of each of these core behaviors. Next slide, please. To conclude on principle two, it's also important to note that many of these accountabilities detailed in principle two are also outlined in principle four in how we support cultural humility when working with the healthcare team. In principle four, nurses are accountable to the same core behaviors related to self-reflecting on their own privilege and biases, not acting on stereotypes or assumption and advocating for our team members to assure that they are treated with respect. We recognize and we understand that providing culturally safe care and practicing cultural humility is ongoing. And we will continue to build our understanding and resources in these areas. Next slide, please. So we have highlighted uh, the key features of the revised code of conduct. We spotlighted a new principle, which is solely focused on inclusivity and culturally safe care. We didn't want to leave you without going through a few broad based questions um, that helps demonstrate how the revised code of conduct applies to common practice scenarios. We will present three practice questions and highlight the principles to which statements applied. Feel free to follow along and identify which principles best apply to these practice questions. Next slide, please. So our first question, what are a nurse's accountability when witnessing discrimination against a client? In this scenario, the code is applied with statements from these following principles. Principle one. Nurses respect clients' dignity. For example, nurses prioritize client, a client's health and well-being in the therapeutic nurse relationship. Principle two applies. Nurses provide inclusive and culturally safe care by practicing cultural humility, such as taking proper action to prevent discrimination when observing or identifying discrimination against a client well-being in the therapeutic nurse relationship from these following principles. Principle one, nurses respect clients' dignity. For example, nurses prioritize client, 
a client's health and well-being in the therapeutic nurse relationship. Principle two applies. Nurses provide inclusive and culturally safe care by practicing cultural humility, such as taking proper action to prevent discrimination when observing or identifying discrimination against a client. Principle five applies. Nurses act with integrity in the client's best interests. An example here would be identifying moral and ethical situation and proactively addressing conflicts, dilemmas, or distress interests. An example here would be identifying moral and ethical situation and proactively addressing conflicts, dilemmas, or distress of a client in your care. Principle six, integrity in the client's best interests. An example here for identifying discrimination against a client. Principle five applies. Nurses act with integrity in the client's best interests. An example here would be identifying moral and ethical situation and proactively addressing conflicts, dilemmas, or distress of a client in your care. Principle six applies. Nurses maintain public confidence in the nursing profession. Nurses report any errors of unsafe behavior, unethical conduct, or system issues to the relevant individuals, including employers, CNO, or other regulatory college, whether or not harm has occurred. Nurses also apply principle six by self-reflecting, identifying learning needs in their practice and engaging in continuing learning to improve their competency. Next slide, please. Our next question asks, learning to improve their competency. Next slide, please. Our next question asks, what are nurses accountability if they are asked to work in a clinical area because of limited staffing? In this scenario, the code is applied with statements from principle three, nurses provide safe and competent care. For example, nurses identify when a client's therapeutic needs are outside of their legal scope of practice or their individual competency and supports a client to seek services from proper healthcare pr professionals. Principle four applies. Nurses work respectfully with the healthcare team. One way nurses do this is by collaborating with the healthcare team clearly, effectively, professionally, and timely to provide safe client care. Principle six applies. Nurses maintain public confidence in the nursing profession. In this, in this principle, an example would be nurses understanding and practicing in compliance with relevant laws and standards of practice, and they do not breach them. Next slide, please. Our last question, what are the nurses accountability when noticing a nurse colleague? Next slide, please. Our last breach them. An example would be nurses understanding and practicing in compliance with relevant laws and standards of practice, and they do not breach them. Next slide, please. Our last question, what are the nurses accountability when noticing a nurse colleague being impatient and unfriendly with a nursing student? In this scenario, the code is applied with statements from principle four. Nurses work respectfully with the healthcare team. This includes nurses, nursing colleagues, students, as well as those professionals from the broader healthcare team. An example of how to apply this, princ this principle includes nurses self-reflecting on how their privilege, bias, values, belief structures, behaviors, and position of power may impact relationship with the healthcare team member and the nurse supports mentors and teach the healthcare team members. That concludes my scenarios. I will hand it over to Eva to review and wrap up. Thank you very much, Chantal, for that great overview of principle two, and also going through the broad-based questions to demonstrate how the revised code applies in practice scenarios. 
To further support your understanding of the code, there will be many different resources that you can access on our website. This includes specific information about the revised code, FAQs, and a new learning module on Principle 2. These resources will be available in both English and French. And again, we will continue to develop additional resources to support the code's application and practice based on inquiries that we will receive from nurses and stakeholders. Next slide, please. We would also like to highlight that our website has many resources available for nurses to support their practice. For example, our Ask Practice FAQs answer common questions related to accountability, continuing competence, and more. Our educational tools include webcasts, learning modules, and other resources that you, you may also find helpful. In addition, we have noted our quality assurance page, which includes self-reflection and learning plan templates. If you do have any further practice-related questions, you're also welcome to complete our practice support form, and one of our advanced practice consultants will respond within three business days. Next slide, please. In summary, the revised code takes effect June 5th, 2023. In this webinar, we have underlined some of the key features and changes to the revised code and highlighted an entirely new principle focused on providing inclusive and culturally safe care. We have also reviewed broad-based questions and how the code applies in practice scenarios. As part of the journey in modernizing practice standards, CNO is also updating and modernizing other practice standards to reflect the evolving nature of nursing practice. We encourage you to modernizing practice standards. CNO is also updating and modernizing questions and how the code applies in practice scenarios. As part of the journey in modernizing practice standards, CNO is also updating and modernizing other practice standards to reflect the evolving nature of nursing practice. We encourage you to stay tuned and check our website for CNO is also updating and modernizing other practice standards to reflect the evolving nature of practice. As part of the journey in modernizing practice standards, CNO is also updating and modernizing other practice standards to reflect the evolving nature of nursing practice. We encourage you to stay tuned and check our website for upcoming changes. This concludes our webinar and we thank you for your, your participation. here to watch that video. Just plug this on the, uh, the actual worksheet here, it says here to uh, watch, or I, sh I should say complete the following CNO online webcast code of conduct, which was that video there. However, uh, seems to be, uh, I'm not sure if this is part of the expectation but to look at the principle two learning module so i'm going to see if i could find that and uh, i'm able to i will try to complete that there's that code of conduct webcast okay so that's this all right this is under the same tab and then there's a what changes were made to the code? So they explained it in regards to a culturally, or the two key terms that were used. It says cultural, cult, cultural safety and cultural humility, which was very is very relevant to uh, our modern society and the the uh, various populations and demographics that we serve. How does the code align with other practice documents? Okay, so 
So this is more an FAQ. So I'm just going to go through it quickly. It says uh, the revised code reflects revised principles to support the re reorganization of enhanced statements. A new principle focused on providing inclusive and culturally safe care by practicing cultural humility. Integration of key concepts throughout the code, for example, empathy and advocacy. Action-oriented mm -hmm. and measurable statements. No. Enhanced alignment with professional misconduct regulation, for example, Clarity around acts of professional misconduct, such as uh, cooperating with the CNO, misappropriation, embedded links to other practice standards. What resources are available to support the revised code? The CNO has developed a series of resources to support the revised code's application. They include an introductory video that describes the key changes to the code, a learning module focusing on principle number two of the code. Uh, so I think I'm looking for that right now. A webinar to help understand the key features of the code. So that's what I just watched, the 20 minute video. And a review of broad based questions uh, that help describe how to apply the code into practice. Ask practice resources to address nurses and other stakeholder inquiries. Please continue to monitor this webpage for future resources. How is this code different from the Canadian Nurse, Nurses Association's, which is the CNA, Code of Ethics? The CNO's code is a provincial document, and that reflects the legal framework and healthcare climate in Ontario. How is the code different from other practice standards? The code is CNO's overarching practice standard. All nurses in Ontario, Ontario are accountable too. It summarizes the expectations from other practice standards. Other CNO practice standards, such as the therapeutic nurse-client relationship and the documentation revised uh, in 2008, support the code and provide guidance to nurses' practice. How does the code align with other practice documents? Practice guidelines such as the conflict prevention and management and, in, and independent practice provide guidance on specific practice related issues related to these topic areas. <coughs> Nurses are expected to guide their practice using the code with other standards, guidelines and educational tools. My employer has a code of conduct. As a nurse, which code am I accountable to? You are accountable to both CNO and your employer. You are responsible for ensuring your practice and conduct aligns with the standards of practice set out by CNO and accountabilities and expectations set by your employer or employers. If you have questions about your specific role and your employer's code of conduct, Consult with your employer to clarify. If you have questions about CNO's conduct of code of conduct, send us your question. What does this statement mean in the code? CNO considers the code in regulatory processes and in reviewing the practice of nurses, such as in quality assurance and professional conduct processes. Nursing practice is considered in its working context and circumstances. The code is a practice standard. The Regulated Health Professionals Act, Professions Act requires nurses to adhere to standards in carrying out the professional responsibilities. CNO places these expectations to ensure nurses provide responsible, safe and quality patient care. Breaching, contravening, or failing to meet these standards is considered professional misconduct. CNO will assess the information considering the context nurses are working. Considering the context nurses are working in, I think they missed the word in, as outlined in the standard of care, and will determine what action should be taken, if any. To learn more about the types of conduct, that are defined as professional misconduct, 
read the professional conduct professional misconduct reference document so that was the uh, FAQ uh, and underneath the FAQ is a another ta tab it reads inclusive and culturally safe care resources I'm going to read this out CNO's code of conduct includes principle number two let me make sure I'm not covering something I shouldn't okay yeah so it does say here principle two learning module uh, I don't know if it's under this right here CNO's code of conduct includes principle number two which focuses on providing inclusive and culturally safe care this principle highlights the importance of learning and understanding cultural context and how an increase okay I'm gonna move into another room and just sorry I can't really speak right now okay let me just do this over here CNO's code of conduct includes principle number two which focuses on providing inclusive and culturally safe care the principle highlights the importance of learning and understanding cultural context and how an increased awareness of, of for example, disabilities, sexual identity, and anti-indigenous and anti-black racism can influence client care. So in order to uh, apply this principle, we need to really learn and understand uh, and be aware of these uh, different uh, contexts. Again, disability, sexual identity, anti-indigenous and anti-black racism, and how they can influence uh, client care. To support nurses learning on inclusive and culturally safe care, the CNO recommends the following resources for guidance. We have included practice resources as well as reports that can help strengthen nurses learning. So there are multiple resources here. The British Columbia College of Nurses and Midwives, Indig Indigenous Cultural Safety, Cultural Humility and Anti-Racism, and then the same thing, but uh, with the subheading Practice Standard Companion Guide. College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, Examining the Root Causes of Ableism. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to look that up. Northern Health, Indigenous Health, Cultural Safety. The Ontario Human Rights Code. Ontario Human Rights Commission, call, Calling Out Racism, uh, Racial Discrimination and Human Rights. We RPN, My Commitment to Cultural Safety, the 519 Glossary of Terms. National Resources from CNO's Culturally Sensitive Care Page. Uh, Canadian Center for Diversity and Inclusion, Canadian Medical Association Journal, Ableism in the Medical Profession. Uh, let's just look at that quickly. So ableism. What is ableism? Ableism by definition is a social prejudice against people with disabilities. It is rooted in a value system where standard abilities are seen as superior. There are still stereotypes and stigmas around people with disabilities where you are deemed inferior. The bias is built into the culture. Several studies have noted how ableism can present itself in healthcare as beliefs that disabilities are a deviation from the accepted norm people with disabilities need and want to be fixed that's an assumption that people make they have to be asked first do they want to uh, have assistance or be rehabilitated or or have uh, receive assistance in this uh, whatever their disability is a disability means worth he worse health a lower quality of, of life or suffering so that's an, another assumption People with disabilities are weak, dependent, and vulnerable. So that is another assumption that people can make, a wrong assumption. Disabilities are a burden on the healthcare system, another assumption. These patients take an inordinate amount of time and energy, 
another assumption. And medical interventions that benefit non-disabled people are not appropriate or futile uh, or for someone with a disability. Uh, yeah, that's a very, these are all uh, assumptions that can be very wrong. Ableism equates a disability with diminished health instead of a different way of being. People can have a disability and still feel healthy, fulfilled, and happy. So that's a very important, I'm glad I went through that. Uh, health Canada's Indigenous Health, National Collaborating Cen Center for Determinants of Health, National Collaborating Center for Indigenous Health, and then we have multiple reports, Black Nurses Task Force Report, Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, and lastly, the Re Reclaiming Power and Place. The final report of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. So that seems to be the uh, Principle 2 module. There's nothing else here uh, in this uh, section because uh, this Principle 2 is providing inclusive and culturally safe care and we have nothing else in this uh, in terms of this resource here. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, this is the video on uh, on me completing this uh, step, which is the Code of Conduct webcast. Let's just make sure we don't miss anything here. Okay. Uh, principle two learning module. Okay, I found it. Okay, let's see what that entails. Uh, to support nurses with the application of principle two in the code of conduct, CNO has created a series of learning modules focused on the three core behaviors of this principle self reflection, uh, creating safer health care experiences, and training and education. This series outlines the actions and behaviors nurses can take to provide inclusive and culturally safe care. These learning modules were created in collaboration with the CPS of BC and the BC College of Nurses and Midwives, BCCNM. So we have <clears throat> multiple videos, three videos in total. So I believe these should be viewed uh, in order to truly complete this uh, this uh, webinar because this was part of that presentation. So I will do that in a, in a separate video. Stay tuned for that one.